What I've always intended to do here on this channel is to find the best value for the money in tech. And as far as dynamic microphones are concerned, I think I may have just done it. This is the Fifine K669D dynamic microphone. And it very well could be pound for pound the best dynamic microphone for the money on the market. Quick disclaimer. Fifine sent me this mic for free in return for a fair and honest review, but I'm not obligated to say anything in particular about the mic, and all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. But let me follow up that disclaimer with this. I actually love this microphone so much that I dropped my own money to buy a second one just in case I would ever have to do a two-person recording. I want to make sure that I have consistent sound, and in my opinion, this mic is well worth what I paid for it. And what did I pay for it? Just a hair over $37. Let's take a second to ask, what is going on with all of these cheap, dynamic microphones that we suddenly have available? Let me rephrase that. What is going on with our selection of great, inexpensive dynamic microphones that we suddenly have available? Because this thing isn't cheap. Not in build quality, anyway. It's built like a tank. The construction of this mic feels every bit as solid as the Samson Q9X, if not better. This is a tough, tough metal body. When I first started reviewing dynamic microphones, I was very impressed with the F-Deuce SL40, which at that time was selling for 70 bucks. And in my opinion, this mic sounds far superior at just a little over half that price. I normally do an unboxing with my tech review videos, but this one is short, with the box including paperwork, yeah, a solid little desktop stand that I won't use, and the mic. It's got a plastic mounting bracket, but it's a well-made plastic. This kit does not include any adapter rings for a mic stand or XLR cables, which really should be expected at this price point. Which also means you will want to budget extra for an XLR cable if you don't have one already. One of my favorite things about this mic is its small size. So you get the benefit of a solid construction, but a cheap boom arm will do the job in keeping the mic off of your desk because of its light weight. And the more I actually look at this mic, the more I prefer it, appearance-wise, to any other mic that I own. Also, the major downside of this mic is, unfortunately, that it is not an XLR slash USB combo mic. It's XLR only, so you will need to have an audio interface of some sort to get the sound from the mic to your PC. Also of note, there is no physical mute button for this mic. It's no frills, and I actually like that. Some people may not like the absence of a mute button, so just be aware of that before you buy it. As audio quality goes, you've been listening to it unfiltered and unprocessed with no post-production editing. What you hear is what you get. I've recorded everything with a Scarlett 2i2 interface with the volume set around 3 o'clock. Here are a few audio tests beginning with a plosive test. Peter Piper popped a pimple and promptly pooped his pants. You will want to stay slightly off axis and keep your mouth about a fist distance away from the mic. Any closer than that and directly on, the mic does become a little prone to plosives, but no more or less than the average dynamic mic. Here's an up-close plosive test. Peter Piper popped a pimple and promptly pooped his pants. And with this being a dynamic mic, it's going to be excellent for people who don't have sound-treated rooms, as it will do a great job of filtering out background noises. The downside of a dynamic mic is that it will sound much better the closer you keep it to your mouth. It's got to be kept pretty close. I like to keep my mouth around 4 to 8 inches away from this mic. As it moves away, you can definitely hear a drop-off in audio clarity and quality. Here's what the mic sounds like from the side. And here's what it sounds like from directly behind. Here's a handling noise test. Tapping on the desk and moving some junk around. This is what it sounds like as I talk and type on the keyboard with the keyboard being about 12 inches directly below the mic. Here's a background noise test using my extremely noisy fan. Before I wrap up, I'm going to compare this mic to a few other mics that I own so you can hear the difference for yourself. 
I'm just going to remove the XLR cable from the back of the mic and plug it into the other mic so no changes to the audio will be made. This is going to be a pretty close direct comparison. For comparison's sake, this is the Samson Q9X. Again, this is what the Q9X from Samson sounds like. I've positioned the mic in about the same position away from my mouth and this is a comparison test between the Samson Q9X and the Fifine K669D. For our second comparison test, this is what the F-Deuce SL40 sounds like. Again, I've just unplugged the XLR cable from the Fifine K669D, and I've plugged it directly into the back of the F-Deuce SL40. None of this audio is processed, and this is what this mic sounds like in comparison. And for our final test, this is the Relicart PM2. Again, this is the Relicart PM2 in comparison to the Fifine K669D. This is what the Relicart PM2 sounds like. Again, I've just removed the XLR cable from the back of the K669D and plugged it into the Relicart PM2. So there's no difference in audio settings. What you hear is what you get. Okay, so I'm back on the Fifine K669D, and as I wrap up now, I just want to make note that you're listening to this mic with my normal array of filters in OBS Studio. I'm not an audio engineer, I'm just an enthusiast, so maybe these will sound off to you. This is the part of the video where I would give my final thoughts on the product, but I think I pretty much made it clear that the entire video basically was my final thoughts on this mic. I love it, but you've heard the audio sample, so it's up to you whether or not this mic is a good purchase for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.